Hey, what's up everyone? Brad Chmielewski here, and this is episode 109 of Shatter the Vein. A pretty fun episode here. I am surprised, though, we don't have more details about update 1.20 coming out. We, We got that tease of the new jungle monster. We got that tease of potentially Saw's gun. Who else would have a gun like that for the... Uh, summer party saw skin uh, that should be coming, I think. Probably, probably. Uh, But I thought this update was going to come on July 20th. It looks like it's not going to come this week. That's kind of a bummer because we're getting like this awesome like skin sale on July 22nd uh, because there's no skin available that Friday. So usually of every update, there's been a skin available and not having the update means there's no skin yet so we got that skin sale and that's gonna be pretty awesome because you're gonna be able to get uh tier two and tier three skins with ice and you know what you probably should do i know vainglory they've been uh talking about this amazon coin deal like a ton on their uh live streams like the evil eight for this this season is powered by amazon coin that's a pretty sweet deal and if you're thinking about picking up some uh skins some of those tier two and tier three skins check that out it's at uh, amazon.com slash vanglory you basically get a bunch of free ice when you buy amazon coins so not too bad if you have an android tablet if you have an ios tablet might not work out but android tablet like borrow your friends buy the coins do all that good stuff uh but yeah, I can't wait to see how much those skins are for Friday. We're going to find out. But uh, I got reverse on this episode. Uh, we talk a bunch about uh, the new guild competitive organization uh, that he started and the challenger team he's like climbing the ranks with. Oracle's on that team. I know pretty popular name. He's in Gangstars with me. So a lot of people know his cruel. We should probably get him on an episode here soon. I know the guys over at the main vein had him on. And, yeah, that podcast is no more. We're down to two Vanglory podcasts, me and T-Dog's alternating current. Yikes. What's the, Everyone's just dropping like flies. What's going on? Podcasting is tough, guys. It is tough. Uh, but I'm glad everyone's digging this show and supporting it. I have a lot of fun with it, so we're, we're going to keep going until... The game is awful, or it shuts down completely, or, I don't know, my iPad doesn't work for it, and I can't even watch it. I don't know. We'll, we're going to keep going. I have lots of fun with it. I'm looking forward to update 1.20 coming for some changes, some balance tweaks. Um, see what this Kashka rework might be. Who knows? And then been climbing the ranks a little bit. Haven't talked about that much on the podcast lately, but... Um, Visual skill tier last season was POA, and I just got back to Simply Amazing, so we've been climbing slowly, slowly, slowly. Been documenting uh, the EU climb on the YouTube channel, so if you're watching the video version of the podcast, check out those EU videos, and if you're listening to the audio, subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash shatter the vein, and you get to see some awesome gameplay, lots of support play tends to be what I play, but other stuff too. All right, let's do it. Let's get into episode 109. Shatter the Vein, a podcast about vain glory. This is the 109th episode of Shatter the Vein. My name is Brett Chmielewski, and this is a podcast all about Vainglory. Every week I try to break down the news, gameplay, game tips, and hopefully we can all become better players together. And every week bringing on new people from the community, people that love this game. And this week I have Reverse from Impact Gaming joining me. Welcome. Yeah, it's great to be on here. It's Um, kind of been a dream of mine since I started playing VG. (laughs) Oh, really? That's awesome. (laughs) I love, like, there's so many people that play this game, so many, like, very talented people, too, and you're you're one of them, you're Vainglorious Bronze, yeah. right? Or you recently yeah, hit that bronze. again, right? <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, not quite there this evening oh, yet. Okay. I'm, like, trying to get back up there. No okay. POA gold. I'm sure you'll hit it, especially with your, your team that you're playing with right now, yeah. which, <laughs> but for people that don't know who you are, you want to introduce yourself, let them know? Yeah, so, 
Yeah, so I'm reverse, or S forever, as many people try to pronounce. Okay. Don't even try. <laughs> saying. Um, and then people always get surprised when it's reverse, reversed. <laughs> right. Um, but anyways, so I've been playing VG since, like, basically when it launched. Like, maybe a month late. Okay. I was mostly playing casually until, like, w- winter season. Then I joined Wicked, like, right after you left. Yeah. During, like, the growth of it again. And I was there throughout the Noble days, and then me and a few other people decided to leave... Um, noble at the end of the season because it was kind of going to her more to like a towards more of a like professional organization standpoint and less of like the casual just hang out have fun okay like it's just another way they could go and it's clearly working out for them but and, i decided just to leave for that reason and you wanted because, that more of the casual hang out and have fun or? yeah i liked having like six mans we would just have fun but then i had my team for like the competitive side of things yeah so I wanted to like, have people I could just go hang out with whenever I didn't want to think about the competitive side of things. Mm-hmm. And so I left at the end of this spring season. Okay. A few other people did too. And a couple weeks later, I got contacted by Sleep HD, who used, to be in the, who used to be in Noble. He said, hey, I'm trying to get some people from Noble back together, make a new guild, we're going to call it Impact. And he asked if I wanted to be on management. And I said, sure, I'd love to do that. Sounds like a great opportunity. Nice. So we can try to like make an impact <laughs> in the community. Let's try to... I've here now. We have already almost 300 members on our band. We're wow. just trying to like okay. stuff together. We've only been around for like three weeks, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we have two competitive teams we're trying to get going with. One of them's already completely formed, Impact Chimera. Okay. We're signed up. Hopefully, we'll get one of the seeds in uh, next week's VGL of the Challenger series. Nice. And then we're trying to put, te- put together another one called Impact Dynasty. And we're is trying to grow as much as possible. Mm-hmm. We actually have some like more top tier players you might have heard of that aren't necessarily on a team, but they're just like in the community side of the guild. Uh, who's any any so we well known people that some of the players who listen might have yeah, heard of? <laughs> yeah, we've got um, Chrissy from Ardent Awakening. Okay. Recently joined as a streamer and also just to help out with competitive players. And we also have um, the Human Torch. Okay. You might know plays with um, I Pwn You and Guard on Tornado Triggered, both of yeah. them in the Challenger series. And we've gotten both of them to join, hopefully maybe join some of our competitive teams to try to grow as much as possible. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I love that you're trying to like keep that balance of the competitive and the casual like fun side, like you said, yeah, the six, hard thing to do. six mans and things like that, because uh, there's a lot of people that want one or the other, and like it, it butts heads at times. Yeah. But, it is just a game, and you kind of want to enjoy playing it. Otherwise, it feels like a job. And it's no, it's <laughs> like, you sometimes you want to just hang out and treat it like a game. Yeah. And just kind of chill with people. Because if, if you don't have those people to play with, to have fun with, you can't really learn new heroes either because you're always trying, you're always stressed yeah, that you're like, people are going to get mad at you. <laughs> somebody's like, oh, yeah, you're not playing this correctly. you got to do this. Don't even play in ranked. Yeah. And then... You gotta play casuals, or you can just like have fun with other people and relax and play casuals in just a chill setting. Mm-hmm. It's like I really just wanted to see how Weapon Catherine worked, and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's cool. Like that's that's pretty awesome. You guys have already have that many people yeah. in your band. How many people are in the guild right now? We have like forty-eight, I believe. At the oh moment. wow! Okay. We're almost full. We're still recruiting like a couple players for the Impact Diamonds team, trying to just fill up that were possible. Nice, that's cool. We're almost, yeah, we're pretty much there, and then people will eventually leave, and we have applications on our website, which should be linked to on the tw- on our Twitter at Impact, VG- Impact Gaming VG, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I'll include a link in the notes here in the description, so if anyone's interested in no, joining sorry. or finding out more about the guild, like, definitely check our that out. Our website should be on there. We have an application and just some cool stuff in there. We'll eventually have, like, a new section up there Very cool. on there, so you can check out Vanglory News in the community. That's awesome. Uh, so then your your team, you've got Oracle on it, right? You got, got Oracle, Super Shot, big name in the competitive scene. Yeah. Um, Max Green and Atheo, who are both kind of new players. Oh, and Nine Who's fifty six. You okay. probably. Okay. So yeah, we're trying to just we're called Team Apocalyptic, and we're trying to do whatever we can in this competitive scene. <laughs> yeah. How's it? Um, how's how's it been going? How's the challenge? It's been going pretty well. Uh, week one, we were seeded eighth in the Challenger Series, and we made it until we had to face seed one, and we lost that, okay. as was expected. <laughs> and then week two didn't go quite so well. We actually had an app crash for Super Shot in the middle of one of the games. Okay. Yeah. 
but I mean, it's we're still like ranking and succeeding really well on that, as well as we have we feel like we can do well in the competitive scene. Okay, do you think you're gonna so this this dope. first I guess split you're probably are you do you have enough points to face the top three or are you under that right now? We're under that. Okay, we probably are in like we don't have, do we have points right now? We might have like one or two points. That's okay. it. Because you only get points once you hit the top eight of the Community Challenger series. Oh, okay. All right. I haven't been watching all the community games. There's so much esports that happens. It's like I can watch most of the Evil Eight, and then sometimes I'll catch some of the uh, Community Challenger games, and then it's like it's a shame because they can't stream it all. Yeah. <laughs> matches like when there's 32 teams, you can stream all round. Mm-hmm. So, what role do you it's play? Like, on the team and the in general, you're the realm. Okay. I also jungle a little bit, but <laughs> T- typically going think... for that realm carry. Okay. Yeah. Nice. What's your What's your favorite realm then right now for 1.19? I gotta say Lance. Okay. Like, he's just so much fun. He's gonna up in Lance, and I feel like he has more potential than like anyone else out there. Because he has so many wall jumps. Like everyone has ability besides his B can jump all almost the game. Uh, a when he's competitive players playing him, they'll just they're just jumping walls all the time with him. You can just get around the map so effectively. Yeah. And then you have two major CC to the two abilities of major CC to either hurt someone. And he has to go with it. It's a little unbalanced at the moment, but I'd say, but <laughs> like that early game is a little extreme. Once you get like two weapon blades and just go all out, even as a roam, just get two weapon blades. You're like the strongest carry on the map. Yeah. You you don't he's like. Going. I'm surprised a lot, a lot more people don't play him. I think because they're like a skill. He's a skill shot champion, so he has a higher skill cap. So he is a little harder. So you don't see people picking him up right in away and right now. Yeah, it's also tough like to land his B for his, or his A or his B. Like his A obviously is skill shot, but his B you have to if you want to use it effectively, you have to be in a range to get a stun. Mm-hmm. And you're not always in your wall, so you have to like learn how to position in order you can get an angle on the enemy to hit him into a wall. Right. So that's one of the things that kind of makes people like, oh, I don't want to play him because it takes a while to learn him. Like, that's all I did last patch. Just to <laughs> learn lands? Was I, yeah. I played like a whole ton of casuals, learned lands, learned what I was doing on him. Nice. Yeah, I feel like whenever I play Lance, I miss my A, and whenever I play against Lance, it always hits me, even if I think <laughs> I'm out of it. It's like, what? <laughs> it's so it's like the hardest ability to reflex block, because it's such a small, small period of time ago if you're going to be in it or not, because the hitbox is in the little times. Right, yeah. Like on the very end of the hitbox, sometimes it'll look like you didn't hit him, but it'll actually land the root. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, well, that's, that's really cool. Did you play any other MOBAs before getting into Vanglory, or was it your first one? Um, Vingler is pretty much my first MOBA. Uh, yeah, I played, like, Heroes of Order and Chaos a couple times, but never, like, got into it. Okay. Back, like, I, I was mostly a mobile gamer. Okay. I played a lot of, like, mobile MMOs. You brought, like, Order and Chaos Online, stuff like that. And then I saw Vainglory. Not at, like, I didn't see, um, it be, uh, announced at the WWDC. Yeah. But then I saw it on the after, like, a couple weeks later, and I was like, oh, a couple weeks later after launch, and I was like, oh, this looks cool. And I played it, and I was really bad. I was in Spock Saw for, for like, month. just Saw all the time. Sure, yeah, why not? It makes yeah. the most sense. You just shoot. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to stutter step at all. Just sit there. If you die, that's okay. Yeah. And then eventually I decided, hey, this is cool. And I actually, when I saw the first, like, World Invitational, the one that Invincible Armada won, like, a year ago about. Oh, right, yeah. I saw that on YouTube and I was like, wow, okay, this is legit. I should actually start playing this. <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I think I can get better. Yeah. I should actually, yeah, I get better than like tier five. I can hopefully improve and I th- think I have. So, That's yeah. awesome. Uh, well, you said you're a mobile gamer and I know this is a Vainglory podcast, but Pokemon Go came out. Have you been jumping on that a little bit? <laughs> Not quite as much as some people. Okay. <laughs> like, you see people like, oh, I'm level 20, I've been playing like eight hours a day. Not quite. Okay. Like, I've, played a little bit I've played a cup in there okay. <laughs> yeah it seems to Certainly have is. taken control of a lot of the Vainglory chats and like it's I don't know it's I'm thinking that's my chance to get better Vainglory become the best there you go <laughs> well I'm also distracted yeah. I can 
That's true. Everyone's out playing Pokemon Go. You can jump in there and rank yeah. up. <laughs> I, like I don't face any pro teams because they're all just playing Pokemon all the time. Yeah. <laughs> sure. uh, well, should we jump into the news of the Vainglory news? It's been a little quiet, but there are some fun things to talk about. Vainglory news. So the first thing to mention is the new Fury Rona Tier 2 skin. It's the last skin in 1.20 to be available, and that got released on this past Friday. Um, yeah. So this is the this Tier 2 skin. It's, what do you think? Uh, it's not quite what I, I didn't think they'd go to, like, this whole cop thing. I kind of expected more of, like, the Berserker Rona kind of look they had for Tier 1, but I yeah. definitely like it. Like, it's definitely a good place to go. With, yeah. like, the shock paddles. Mm-hmm. That's, like, I just found that kind of interesting. And then the whole idea, I wonder where Tier 3 can go from this, basically, because you're taking this whole cop idea. This is, like, the extreme, it just already looks like kind of a Mad Max thing. I wonder where Tier 3 could possibly go. <laughs> yeah, I guess I kind of thought it would be a little more, a little grittier, because it does feel like it's this Mad Max kind of theme, but then it's also getting yeah. a little uh, more modern, like... Tier one was like uh, yeah, she's... really rough, and tier two, it's like oh now you have a hat and glasses, and you have a little more technology. Uh, tier three yeah. is it going to be like full out, just current day cop kind of Rona? I know there was a, a fan art a while ago of like a cop Rona that looked pretty awesome. So I wonder if they go down that road. Hmm. I mean, I can imagine they would, but I also feel like they're going to kind of embrace, like, more of a tier one, but, like, in an extreme way. Take that Berserker Rona, like, the Fury, as the name is, and just kind of go all out on it. I don't know, that just seems what I would expect from yeah. tier three. Uh, but, yeah, so, I, I bet, be yeah, I think tier three should be coming out in 1.20. We had, like, a little tease image we got, like, Most a while likely. ago, so... We'll probably see the skin come pretty quickly. Seem to have, um, yeah. Um, and then, uh, since this is a tier two skin, and then Vanglory said there's going to be no new hero skin on Friday the twenty second, which I'm a little disappointed yeah. in because I thought update one twenty was going to come out on July twentieth. So this means that <laughs> update one twenty isn't going to be coming next week or oh. this this week since the podcast is out on Monday. Probably the, probably the week after that. Right, so it would be that. Most likely, yeah. Uh, which maybe makes sense, because then um, the week three splits of both the Challenger and the Evil 8 are done. Oh, yeah, we we'll line up with it. So, like, the split yeah, finish. The right time finish. Yeah, so maybe it has something to do with that. But um, what they're going to do instead on Friday, July 22nd, is a summer skin sale. So for the first time ever... Players will be able to directly purchase yeah. tier two and tier three skins. Whether you want to unlock that death metal cruel tier three or that Rona tier two, um, you don't need to get the cards. You can just straight up use money and get them. That's kind of sweet this for is, people that aren't able to like farm all those cards and buy the cards because it it's gets hard, expensive. Yeah. <laughs> It takes a long time. I remember after opening all my chests, like when they added in the chest system to level 20, I opened all, all those and I spent all that glory and I still didn't have a single tier 3 skin. Mm-hmm. And so it's such a pain to get those. Like you have to grind a ton. You have to be really committed to get a single one. So it's a nice thing that they're adding in. Not only, because also even if you're paying with ice, you have to wait for the ice box. Right. Like just that ice box, that card, and you have to, maybe you won't get the cards you need from it. It might take you a ton of openings to get the cards you need. You might end up throwing away a ton of ice. So this is nice. At least it's probably going to be for about a half a week or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember. It's nice that those players that are really don't have the time, but they have the money, can still get the skins that they like. <laughs> yeah, I remember when uh, Tier 3 uh, Catherine came out. Or no, it was Tier 3 Kashka. I spent, I bought the ice box. I sp- think I spent like 100 bucks because you had to buy two ice boxes, really. And it's like, oh my God, that was a lot of money, but I got that skin. And that was pretty awesome. <laughs> so I can't imagine. Like I yeah, wonder. Especially since. Oh god. The glory boxes right now tend to like have a mix of a whole bunch of different heroes in them. Yeah. So you get like if you want a certain skin, 
think it would be like three, like maybe three, four cards. Mm -hmm. And then the box. Yeah, and I can't. And so you're not going to get many treasure skins from Glory Box anymore, as long as they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And then I can't imagine how much these skins are going to cost. Like they didn't give prices; they just said it's a summer skin sale. I don't know if sale means actual sale or just they're on sale, but. Yeah. Tier three also skins like card boxes. Yeah, like there's bar card boxes now, so that'll. It also means like if you don't be ice to straight up buy it, and you just need like half of it, you can get cheaper card boxes. Okay, nice. That's kind of yeah, because it would be bummer if you had like almost all the cards, and then all of a sudden you can't. You're like yeah, also card cards. <laughs> if you want it, you have to pay like who knows how much ice it'll be. Uh -huh. <laughs> not quite as much. The summer party cruel, but. Probably a lot. Yeah. That's uh, a lot of ice. <laughs> is there, are you going to pick one up? Is there a skin you're missing that you um, throw down some cash? I'm missing cash? a lot of skins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I don't play Ringo that often, but that Ringo seems kind of a staple. Like, you kind of got to have it if you're going to play him. Yeah. People say it makes stutter stepping easier. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's like a two or three skin that I'm missing that I would like. Also the Arden one. Yeah, the Arden one's pretty I should nice. have it as a yeah. main, but I just don't. <laughs> Yeah. I think it might be better off getting, if you're missing a lot of skins, like getting some of the tier two skins and saving those cards for the tier three, because you know yeah. those tier threes are going to be more expensive, so you can just move those cards over. Go that might be the way to go. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've I just completely like thrown away all my other cards that like entirely, and then just focus entirely on one skin. Because otherwise, it's such a pain. If you want to work on like two skins at once, it'll take you so long to get them both. Yeah, for like, sure. In my <laughs> and when you're only getting summer cruel cards right now, <laughs> like, yeah. damn it, I need something else. Come on. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. I'm sure we'll get some more details on prices and how the sale is going to work. Um, and then yeah. Super Evil's been doing a pretty nice job, like sharing images and giving us updates of stuff that will oh, yeah. be coming um, in these future patches. Um, one that got shared on the Friday Coffee with Zcat was the new jungle monster designs. Um, so I got oh, yeah. a link in the show notes. If you didn't see this, uh, it got posted on Reddit and as well in that stream. But this is a very cool design for the jungle monsters. It's it, on Twitter also. Yeah. Um, it doesn't just look like a big minion now. It looks... Like a legit monster you find. <laughs> yeah, in the Twitter post they called it the Triant, and they said the Triant's now coming to oh, Bangalore. Triant, okay. In the summer. Yeah. Um, so I'm, and I was like, that's going to be interesting. It's just going to be a reskin probably on the same thing. Yeah. But it's still like interesting that since they're doing map reskins all the time, that in the middle of the season they'll do more than just like keep the same summer map for the whole season. Yeah, I kind of like that. I don't know if this replaces both big jungle monsters or if it's just going to be that one uh the first big one by your base and then maybe the My, middle guy gets a little different design i don't know yeah i don't know they'll probably do another reskin for the backs like the doubles just to seem to be weird to leave those the same but just change the human monsters yeah right. it sounds interesting no matter what like either it's just one and then then we're going to have to see like some minion miner and gold miner reworks and they're, they're just going to look dated. I think that's yeah. what, that's what I'd love about Vainglory is they, they are always tweaking and updating skins and textures. And sometimes you'll just notice small things that they add in like, Oh, there's a little more particles on that or it's something small like, got updated. That will change the miners. I feel like they're going to change the miners soon. Cause if you look at like, they look exactly like your lane minions, just bigger basically without a color. Yeah. Like they're not, it's like they're like minions just like expanded a lot. So I have a feeling they'll probably change them in a future patch, like fairly soon. Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah, uh, there you go. And then one of the other images that got shared was an image of a basically a water gun, which everyone yeah. has come to the conclusion, I think, that this is Saw's water gun. Yeah, it looks, uh, it looks like it can spin around kind of like his new animations does on his skin yeah. um it looks like it's gonna be kind of a rotating gun like that mm -hmm. and so this would be the skin in this image where the Wait, person's kind of here. crouched down and uh looks like he's holding a shovel a little shovel so that's probably going to be saw shank is a shovel so i think oh yeah you can just yeah 
like the little kid shovel as your shank that would be cool yeah so i think this skin's gonna be really awesome looking and it's gonna be super bright colored because this water gun is like so bright so i can't wait to see this one yeah i'm imagining with the little shank we're thinking of and that gun it'll just kind of be like water toys so yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much uh, so those are the those are a couple images right now that have been shared officially by Vanglory. There's some other stuff floating around that have been leaked from the PBE, and you can kind of dig those up if you want. A lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait. We'll wait till the official update uh, here in the yeah. couple weeks to talk about it more. Uh, and then on Reddit, they there's a post about a new North American community manager. Um, so right now or before this. Wolfhands uh, was pretty much the North American community manager. Um, he kind of yeah. came in, uh, I'd say about a year ago now. He's been there. Um, and then at some point, other people were helping him out, especially with the news feed. Like, God's Eye was kind of on that for a while. I'm not sure where God's Eye went to now or what his role is, but it seems like Wolfhands and this new community manager, Gary, is now in charge of kind of the I saw some Twitter post from God's Eye saying that he was going to be stepping down and taking some other job. I forget what it was. Oh, okay. So that he makes stepping sense. down from job, yeah. That makes sense why I haven't seen too much from him lately in some of the community yeah. chats and things. Uh, but Gary, there's a Ask Me Anything on him on Reddit, so there's a link in the show notes. Um, I met him at the, what was this, the fall? No, the winter live finals, I want to say. Um, and yeah, I believe he used to be on Nemesis for a little while. He was also called Spanky, was his uh, original Fanglory name, and then he just changed it to Gary. I don't know how he got yep. Gary at some point, especially so <laughs> late into the game. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at all these, um, he had a list of his previous skill tiers. He's like been PO away for most seasons. Yeah. It's nice to see if there's someone of a high tier that's working like with the community. Because they know like what the community is looking for, and they they know like where to look for what the community wants. Yeah. Because you know there's some places you might look, and it's not a true represent representation of what the community really wants. Like you'll see some random forum posts that are like, "Oh, we need to nerf Jewel. She's so OP." <laughs> but you know, it's all about learning where you see. Like he, since he has so much experience, he knows where the right information is. Yeah, that's on true. On what needs to be changed and what the community wants. And because he's had that skill tear, and he was on Nemesis and friends with those people. He comes in with a little, a nice background of knowledge to like go to those people if needed. So it's always good that Vanglory brings people from the community because they know who the, the people are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they know what's going on in the community yeah. all the time. Uh, so I like this. Uh, he's answered questions on Reddit right now on an Ask Me Anything. I think he's still doing it and yeah. probably will continue to respond. So if you have any questions for him, if you just want to know a little more about him, check it out. And I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more from him over the next few months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the last bit of news, I always like to mention the free hero rotation because a lot of us, a lot of players out there don't have all this heroes especially since some of them got their price raised it's a little harder yeah. to <laughs> have everyone now uh, it's, it's, and if you're coming into a MOBA you always feel like everything is too expensive so it takes some time to kind of get those heroes and get everyone so this week's free hero rotation includes Rhyme, Glaive, Arden, Ringo, Blackfeather, and Catherine. Pretty solid lineup. Not bad. Anyone, I feel like Catherine has kind of resurged yeah, into the meta. Nightmare popularized that storm ground aftershock build. Mm -hmm. You see a lot. You see a lot of people running carry cap with that. Right. But yeah. out of those, like, if you're gonna learn one of them, probably glaive in my opinion. Glaive, okay. Why? Anything. Like I've been a glaive main pretty much since the game, even as a roamer. Like I just love glaive. And I feel like his abilities, like, he's not too hard to learn, but his, like, his afterburn has so much potential that once you learn some, someone of what he can do, then you just realize there's so much more you can do that you don't even know. Yeah. But he's almost always in the meta also, at least somewhere in the meta. Like, this patch, he's not the best, but he's it's, in there for yeah, sure. Yeah, he's solid. He wrecked me in a game earlier today, so <laughs> I was like, God, 
damn it. I was also playing Rona, so that didn't help. That. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with Wave. <laughs> uh, but if he, especially if you're like credible. He tends to stomp when he does win. Yeah, that's true. But if you're like credible threat or lower, like Glaive can carry games and like you can climb ELO with him. Yeah. I recently was making a new account so I could help out some friends with ranking just so I could play with them and not want to lose you on my main. Okay. And I've been playing a lot of Glaive there. As well as Taka, just because it's like playing carries is fun, but I'm not that great at it, so I play him on my Smurf. And at low elo, like Glaive can carry a game really hard. Yeah. He can just completely annihilate everyone. Since he has so much AoE, he can take out a whole team at once, pretty much. Yeah. And if you're like, like with I, his hand is old. Yeah, and on that new account, and I've been playing him a little on my EU account that I've been ranking. Like he can go support or that jungle carry because he can be this extra damage dealer, especially in 1.19 where eh, the roams are in a weird spot, so you don't always need yeah. one to just wreck. <laughs> yeah, he like, he's probably the most versatile hero in the game, in my opinion. Because mm -hmm. he can play roam, like, very effectively. You see roam glaive a lot, but it's picked as a flex pick, because he can go lane, jungle, roam, even CP glaive is semi-viable if you know how to play it. Like, yeah. not, not really in high elo, but... If you're like incredible threat or below, like you were saying, CP Glade it can actually do pretty well. Yeah, all of that cooldown and just you just burst. jump in there and knock people back every like two seconds. <laughs> they like don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, aftershock with afterburn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's so much CC and you can never like get killed your soul just escape no matter what. Sure. Nah. Well, that's the free hero rotation. Check some of these people out. Try someone if you haven't played them before bring them into casuals give them a go um but that does it for all the news but i wanted to jump into a random item random item so we saw a lot of the items get changed recently and one of them were the boots well, the boots got changed quite a bit and i wanted to talk about the halcyon chargers yeah, look. these are my favorite boots I think they add so much value to your your ability, especially if we were talking about Glaive. They're solid on Glaive because Afterburn costs quite a bit of energy. Uh, so having something that has <laughs> has an extra energy is great. Ringo, people like that. But I'll, here I'll quickly go over what the Halcyon Chargers do. They are a Tier 3 item. They are built out of uh, your tier two boots and a void battery. And what you get is 200 health. You get 15% cooldown, uh, 250 energy, and then plus four energy recharge. So there you go, health, which is always nice to have. Um, and then the cooldown speed, great on Glaives, on Ringos, on Catherines, Vox, everyone benefits mm. from cooldown speed. Like It's so important. Gotcha. <laughs> and then- uh, People love it. Like, you see everyone just pick these up, even on support, I see um, up a lot, and your jungler just get your war trades for you. I see that sometimes. Because okay. Finn definitely benefits from these. Cooldown speed, energy, energy recharge, those are all issues he has. And plus it gives you health, which helps your B out a little bit. Yeah. Or is it? Yeah. So, Finn definitely benefits from these. Catherine, definitely, for sure. Outside of the rum roll, they're even more useful. All your mages need these, like a core item, basically. Yeah. Uh, and even though weapon carries, some of them. Like Ringo, like you said. Yeah. The only, like, the regular plain dirty boots are great if you're someone that needs to chase. Like, a Vox, having that extra energy regain and cooldown is good, but sometimes I like the straight-up journey boots on Vox because he can just chase people yeah. down real fast. Roll. <laughs> Cruel definitely benefits a lot of dirty boots and black feather mm -hmm. because he doesn't have energy. So if you're a hero that doesn't have energy, most likely chargers aren't going to do it for you. Yeah. So war treads or journey boots could work. Like if your team needs war treads and, or even double war treads, that's viable. It worked well. True. But I know last uh, last episode 108, Shanae and I talked about the war treads, and I just I love the boot changes. I think those were the best changes in the game of. For, yeah. since since a lot of the changes they're just my favorite they made the most sense they create the most like 
counterplay and thought when you're going into the shops, which is what you want because you often see everyone build the same items. Like I saw a pedal, I saw a pedal and a kestrel building the exact same thing. And like a, just a glaive and Rona, it's like, ah, oh, it just like kind of gets stale. Like everyone builds the same way. But when you can think about your boots a little bit, like, oh, do I need this or do I need to help the team out? So I, I love these boot changes and I hope this idea carries over into some of the other items um, and the shop in general moving forward. Yeah, that's one of the things that I'm glory that the shop can kind of get a little stale. Like at each meta, one, like if you're a weapon carry, you most likely just need to build as another weapon carry. Uh -huh. But just adding in more, more versatility, like you can choose different boots or for realms, you can choose different contracts in certain circumstances. Or eventually, hopefully, there's different like carry items, damage items that do different things that you would actually decide on. Because like right now, in this meta, it's pretty much on most weapon carries, you go so, like get a combination of sorrow blade, bone saw, breaking point, maybe a tyrant's monocle. Right. Like you don't. You know, <laughs> there's a couple items you just don't, don't see in there. In each, especially in CP. In CP, it's almost always just been broken myth, eve, shattered glass. Yeah. And you don't really see AC a couple times. You never see a clockwork on a crystal carry anymore. No, and frostburn and it's, not that often. Frostburn not that often anymore. So it's nice when they add in some kind of like more versatility when certain items aren't meta. It just means that you have more, like so many more options on every hero as to what you can build. Yeah. Uh, so check out, I say check out the Halcyon Chargers. Play around with getting different boots. Don't stick to like your, make sure you get boots because that's one thing I'm really bad at. <laughs> Still, even after talking with lots and admitting that I'm bad at buying boots. <laughs> Uh, just make sure you pick up boots and give these give these a try. Boots uh, are great. Yeah. <laughs> so the last other thing I want to talk about uh, form static. This is a pretty good topic. Forum static. So on Reddit, because I'm spending a lot of time on Reddit this past week with the Gary MMA AMA and everything uh, and someone posted about pedal counters and I love talking about pedal because people uh, just like to crap all over pedal as well and because she was she was bad for it wasn't even really that long she was just bad There's a few patches and mm -hmm. she was just bad yeah well she really didn't it wasn't that many at all yeah and, and ever since that nobody thinks she's good right but now she's actually really strong yeah now she's, she's really, really strong good. and I will I will pick her a lot if we don't aren't facing a vox that's you I'm like well I don't want to face pedal in the vox that's kind of a given right there but this post was about pedal counters yeah. that's like top counter <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I would... so Vox. Oh, go ahead. CP Vox is probably your top counter, but then you've got stuff like Lance. Lance is an amazing counter to pedal. Yeah. Just the fact that all your autos, your A and your B, and technically the second attack on your ults, like once you attack, you get, like once you roll, you get the second attack at an instant time. It's a reset. Uh huh. <laughs> um, uh, all of those basically, you have the ability to kill all three enemies at once, and since they group up in a line, you often get that. But past that, those two more obvious ones. I like Glaive into pedal, and I like Ringo into pedal. Okay. Glaive does a great job of after burning in and just shutting her down, stunning her up against the wall, burst her down as fast as possible. Ringo because he has the burst and he doesn't really get annoyed by the like the monies or the seeds. He can just there's no like skill shots being blocked by her monies. It's just all lock on damage. Yeah. Then. And it's right to her face. Doesn't have to worry about the money at all. So any hero that can do that does a great job in the mm -hmm. pedal. And then uh, Kestrel's pretty decent in the pedal because she has an AOE clear for the money. Yeah. So that's always a solid pick if you, too. If you're sneaky Kestrel, you can clear the money with your glimmer shirt. And you can also hit the pedal at the same time if she's within range. Mm -hmm. So you can end up clearing all their stuff out at once. Uh, but yeah. Also, oh, yeah. Aka is an interesting one. Because some people say Taka counters... Pedal, some people will say pedal counters Taka. <laughs> it's just like it. <laughs> it's kind of like you can just outplay it either way. Yeah. It's but often Taka, when he's landing his mortal strikes or whatever, he can one shot her monies and he can just one shot them along the way, then catch up to her and get the speed boost and stay with her. Even if she trampolines, he can just ult away or mm -hmm. use Kai Ken. 
That's true, because uh, Petal's Munions are not very smart right now. I think there's still, still tech to be improved on Petal's Munions, so we'll probably see that. But yeah, Taka could use the Munions that get delayed and get stuck back there to catch up or speed up if, Taka's, or if yeah, except, Petal's trying to run away. Except when, whenever we're talking, Munions do kind of chase a little bit. It's a glitch right now, but or I don't know if it's such a heavy glitch. It might be intended, but it technically makes Petal a decent counter to Taka, but you have to outplay him because he can just keep up with you no matter what. You can trampling away. Yes. Yeah. Stay with you. You can set her seats. You can just dodge them with all the speed boosts. Uh -huh. <laughs> so she, she just says, like, she can counter him if you're a really good Petal player. But for the average Petal player, Taka's going to do really well. Yeah. Into it. Uh, but yeah, it's just like, this is an interesting post and just about like countering pedal who's is like we're saying pretty strong right now i like playing her i think a lot of people are finally realizing how strong she is we're seeing a lot of people in evil eight kind of pick her up as like a last pick because so you don't get countered like the the professional and the pro people know like pedal's a risky pick so let's pick her at the end um yeah i'm like a don't underestimate yeah, pedal so don't get mad if pedal's on your team right now <laughs> Yeah, the way like the way pedal works in the competitive scene, most you know, is that pedal counters a lot of meta heroes. So pedal's really good into castrol, not okay, not really good, but pedal's decent into weapon power castrol because you can block the glitter shots through money and not CP. CP castrol is really good into pedal. Um, Kester, um, pedal's really good into sky. Pedal's really good into cruel. A lot of these meta heroes right now being countered by pedal. Just not many people have the hero pool to play pedal. She takes a lot of time to like learn where your money can be with like the AI, like you're saying. Yeah. They don't always do the right thing, and so you have to learn how what to expect and how to use that. Uh, but she's good at. Yeah, I've still in, I've played pedal for so long back in the beginning of the game. I still am used to like putting down seeds as like heals and things like that when oh, yeah. pedal before pedal got changed. So I. In the middle of fights, Our I will like lay seeds down really quick, and forgetting like, oh, these aren't really doing anything except maybe bursting people if they like come to attack me. So then at the end There's of the something about. yeah, at the end of the fight, if you lay down seeds. Mm -hmm. If you lay down seeds, then basically, whenever your minions die, you're gonna just instantly get another minion. So a lot of people forget about that, and someone like Taco just come up and just one shot each of the three minions, and then all of a sudden she has nothing left. So that's like what you have to know about Petal is not to drain your mana or whatever resources of seeds, yeah. but you also want to make sure you have like the proper balance of having the seeds on the ground, For sure. um, so that if your minions get killed by someone, you can easily get another money back. Uh -huh. But yeah, after at the end of the fight, there are so many seeds around when I play. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, check out check out this post and play play some pedal now, everyone. Give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the last thing before I get out of here, since we're recording this on Saturday, I'm gonna come back in and kind of insert an evil eight kind of update rundown of what's been happening. I know I saw a couple of people on Twitter talking about they'd love to see like a eSports podcast or just breakdown of what happened. So I'm going to kind of just come back. And since it's week three going into the uh, relegations and things like that, we'll give a little update here. All right, so we got a little Evil 8 update a little esports update for everyone that maybe missed some of the games this weekend especially because i was recording with Re reverse on saturday we didn't get to talk about the outcomes and what went down especially because this was the third week of the split which means after this week they have to play in the relegations and the challenger teams get to play the worst or the the bottom i want to say worst the bottom uh, evil eight teams, the three teams, and those challenger teams could steal that spot for the second split. Um, so some really fun games. We saw like some Rome Taka and some definitely some upsets and surprises too overall. Uh, but the way the points sh shook up, um, or at least today or this weekend, against our Cerberus 
and Team Secret battled it out for first and second place, and Team Secret ended up coming in ahead. Um, it was really nice to see uh, Leon back with uh, the Gangstars team because they had that off week, I think it was last week, where he wasn't there, and it kind of, they faltered a little bit. So it was nice to see them with that squad and really, like, you know, putting up a good fight against Team Secret, although I think Team Secret ended up going 2-0 against them. Um, so the points came out to Team Secret with 20, Gangstars with 15, Snow Tsunami with 11, SK Gaming with 6, Mouse Esports with 6 as well. Um, so those teams are all safe. Uh, those five teams, they are going to stay in the Evil 8. And then these three bottom teams, uh, G2, Four Justice, and Lemon and Lime, they have to play on Thursday to see if they get to keep their spot in Evil 8. So the Challenger games take place on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then they will know who are the top Challenger teams. Uh, I know we've seen some uh, really good teams on the NA side. I've been watching those a little more than I have been the EU games, but yeah. Uh, so we could have three totally different new teams on the EU side, or G2, Four Justice, Lemon and Lime may hold on to their spots. Um, I don't know. I think it could go any way over here, and I'm, I don't know. It should be interesting. I think we will have, like, at least one new team coming in here. Um, Lemon Lime ended with zero points, so a little worried about what they're showing might be, uh, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully they're good games. So I'm going to be tuning in on Thursday, because I think that's really exciting, and I love the the challenger aspect where new teams can come in and kind of just shake things up and really, uh, I don't know, just change the meta and change that flow so we're not in the same, uh, same I guess, 20 people every week, day in and day out. And then on the NA side, uh, these games were all like so much closer and the teams were a lot closer overall in these three weeks. Uh, so the points came out this way. We got Nemesis Hydra with 16 Phoenix Rain with 15, Hammers with 15, Hammers Velocity, sorry, and uh, Team Team Solo Mid with 10, Hammers Kinetic with 5. So those five teams, they are safe. They do not have to play in the Challengers. They will move on to week split two of week one uh, next weekend. Um, and then the bottom three teams are Phoenix Reborn, Sweet and Sour, and Gangstar Serious. Games are serious. Came out with zero points um, this split. I gotta say it was pretty. It was pretty tough for them. They definitely had a new squad. Uh, totally different team over here on the NA side. They haven't been playing together. They like just formed like what a couple weeks before, maybe even days before the Evil Eight. So yeah, but to zero points. That's rough. I was, I'm sure they were hoping to at least get that fifth place so they didn't have to fight it out for the challenger side. So we'll have to see how they do. I'm sure they'll be putting up a very good fight because uh, they would like to stay in here and hopefully get some points to kind of uh, show themselves in the second half of the split. Uh, as far as Phoenix Reborn and Sweet and Sour, I think... Uh, Phoenix Reborn will probably end up staying in. Not sure about Sweet and Sour. We'll have to watch that one closely. But I think, again, we'll probably have at least one or two new teams on the NA side. Um, but that's kind of what went down with this uh, first half of the split. Uh, every the three weeks, they're going to play it out, and then they will battle for those spots, the challenger spots as well. Um, not all the Challenger games are streamed, so it's hard to sometimes keep up on what's happening with that. Uh, but I do watch as many of the Evil 8 EU and NA games as I can. It is a lot of games. It starts at 11 a.m. my time and ends like, I don't know what, like 6 or 8 uh, my time. So it's a lot of games to sit here. I try to at least tune in and see what's happening. Some fun ones. Um, all the VODs get posted for them as well, and it's really really neat. I gotta say, Nemesis Hydra was looking crazy good the last two weeks. I believe they went 12-0. and They didn't lose a single game. Um, that's nuts. I don't, I don't remember them winning that many, but the casters and the analysts were saying that, so that's awesome. Hardik and Lost Boy, like, 
they've been in the finals every year, every what uh, season? Not every year, every season, and it's really nice to see them like on top this time. Like uh, really cool. Um, finally, like got that synergy with that third player, and they are wrecking it out there uh, they're doing some really fart, smart stuff and lost boy tough is able to like shine on his support like probably the best support uh in na and it's really great to see him play especially when he has two carries that can like back him up and he doesn't have to worry about them doing a uh, silly thing so very cool looking forward to seeing nemesis hydra as they move forward into this uh second half of the split so that's a little Evil 8 rundown for you. Hope you like that here in the podcast. Uh, if you don't, let me know. Throw a comment on Twitter. Send me an email, uh, shadowthevein at gmail.com. Or if you like this and I can go more in depth each week on some of the games, some of my favorite parts, uh, we can throw this in and as its own little segment. All right, let's jump back in the episode. We're just about done here. Uh, so let's do it. So that was the Evil 8 rundown, and that's going to do it for episode 109, Reverse. Thanks for joining me. This was awesome. It was great. It was a fun time. Uh, where can people find you, get in touch, Twitter, best place? Yeah, yeah pretty much. Twitter is at srevervg. Okay. Um, you can also check out Impact's Twitter at Impact, Impact VG, I believe. It be Impact Gaming VG. Cool. Yeah, I'll, and I'll actually add it right here. <laughs> yeah, I'll include a link in the um, post and the um, show notes. Okay. And, and then there's also a Twitter or Challenger League team. And that's pretty much the best way. You can also join the Impact Band. Nice. Just look up the thing. Online band. We already have 207 members, almost 300. Yeah. All right, I got, I got, I'll got. i join that, help you guys get that 300. I forget to check <laughs> band. I, lo- I like... I like band and like the idea of it, but it's not where all the people I interact with, so I forget to check it sometimes, but I do love the application, and it is a great application. <laughs> I just forget about it in my, like, ten other app- chat apps <laughs> I have. Yeah, there's so many people use Wine, Band, Discord, Twitter chat, mm-hmm. like, everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that does it, then, for episode 109. You can follow Shadow the Vein on Twitter, at Shadow the Vein. The website, shadowthevein.com. All the episodes get posted there. Links to iTunes, Stitcher, the YouTube version as well. And then our my Facebook page, backslash Shadow the Vein, usually posting fan art, news, everything like that on there. And one update 1.20 should be here soon. I thought it was going to be a lot quicker, but it looks like we're going to have another week. So we'll have a patch rundown episode, probably... I bet it'd be 111. I bet we get another episode out before uh, 1.20 drops. But I can't wait. We got more time to play 119. And I'll keep climbing with that box. That's what I'm going to (laughs) do. That'll do it. Take care. Thanks for listening. Let's get this over with.